Hello everyone and welcome to the 4th Winter 2023-24 update from Gals Weather Feed. So here we go again, it's time to bring you more winter data and uh, this one is going to be an absolute epic. We're going to start uh, where we left off last week, looking at what's going on with the uh, hurricane season at the moment. And uh, we're going to go through all of the things that we always look at at the end of the video. We're going to be having a look at sea surface temperature and dominance in the Atlantic and comparing back to uh, every year since uh, 1985. So uh, unique content. Content here at Gals Web is for our fourth winter update, and I should get on with that for you in a moment. It's going to be a real, real epic, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. And uh, more in a second, but just to say thank you so much to uh, Richard for our incredible uh, Gals Web 2023 2024 winter update gear. Thank you so much, thank you so much, Rich. I love it, I love our gear, incredible. I think it's one of the best that Richard has ever done. And next week, we're gonna actually start. Start uh, taking your names for the fox and for the deer. So, uh, yes, you'll be able to submit your names for the deer and for the fox from uh, next week. And um, we shall put all the names on the name picker, and we shall be naming those uh, two um, those two animals within the winter updates gear. But thank you so much, thank you so much to Richard Shaw. Richard been on holiday, but he he is back. Um, Imminently, I think it's back today, and uh, so that means that uh, next week you're going to see the swingometer for the very first time this season. I know a lot of you are waiting for that, so uh, next week the first thing you'll see at the beginning of the uh, fifth update will be uh, the swingo. So, um, yeah, that's coming up next week. Thank you, Shannon Richard, for our gift, and thank you to Shrine Bruin as well for the, all the help on this uh, video. So, uh, when we get to the sections where Shrine has helped us with then um i will be giving shrine a big shout out of course thank you so much a hashtag team gab amazing incredible of course i announced last week that the uh winter forecast is going to be released on uh sunday the third of december so i've uh, got a long way to go uh, yet we're still just in the feeling out process of these winter updates really we're not at the busy setting uh yet we're having a little bit of fun with these uh, updates but they will be getting more serious of course as we go uh along and all the updates of course are building up the picture for rain sickly to uh when we um get to the point that we can release our forecast. So, so yes, you know, each one of these uh, updates is important unto itself, but also adding to the uh, bigger picture within the, uh, within the forecast methodology too. Uh, so, please like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, doing that. Be live at uh, 6 p.m. discussing this winter update. Uh, more about that at the end of the video, though. And I think with that said, I think I've gone on for long enough. So, why don't we crack on and uh, begin the fourth winter 2023 24 update. Let's do that then. So, as I say, we're going to pick things up. <coughs> Excuse me, everybody. We're going to pick things up exactly where we left off. With last week's third update, um, looking at the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season. So here we go. This is the uh, 2023 Atlantic hurricane season page from uh, Wikipedia. Um, and these are the scores on the doors, Miss Ford. So the season so far. We have had 17 tropical depressions. We have 16 tropical storms. We have had six hurricanes. We have had three, three major category three or above hurricanes. So for the total depressions number, that is up two. For the total tropical storms number, that is up two as well from last week. Hurricanes is up one from uh, last week. And uh, major hurricanes at three unchanged from um, last week. Pretty big season as we uh, uh, sort of went through um, last week and uh, this is how the ACE is currently looking accumulated so like as you said ACE Master Shrine Bruin has been keeping this updated uh, for us so uh, we got all the ACE going back to 1851 here the classification is below normal near normal above average hyperactive and if we come down to 2023 so far for accumulated cyclone energy we can see that uh, this season so far is sitting at 117.20 117.20 that is after 16 storms um 
six hurricanes and three category three or above hurricanes um and that of course is uh, above the 84.40 that is the running average this time of year so this is a bigger hurricane season both in terms of the numbers and in terms of accumulated cyclone energy um we would have expected 10 storms five hurricanes and two major so all the numbers are above average and interestingly we are above average compared to, or we're above last year as well this is 2022 and last year's total accumulated cyclone energy was 95.10 if we explained last week this is very very unusual very unusual scenario where we've got a developing el nino there aren't many years within you know the record that are doing what um 2023 is doing so this is a, a really unique and unusual uh year there were a couple 1969 2004 that were pretty big hurricane seasons with an el nino so there's a couple of examples but um to be honest 2023 is standing out as, as a very unusual season so far we went through all of that um at the end of uh, last week's uh, epic third update Okay, so related to hurricane season, of course, is what's going on with sea service temperature knowledge. This is from uh, this is from Noah. This is how things were looking at last week. Got our four interest areas. Got the Enso region just here. Got the Northern Pacific up here. Particular focus on the Northeastern Pacific. Indian Ocean is over there, and uh, of course, got the Atlantic Ocean over here. That is how the oceans were set up uh, last week. We did the third update. This is how things looking this week so let's do with the enso region first of all what's gone on through the extra pacific ocean back to last week and have a look so not a lot of change i think we have seen general warming over the past week throughout most of the equatorial pacific ocean all regions are showing an enso signal it's still warmest in the eastern portion through here um but is warming up increasingly through the central and western regions as well so all regions are showing an enso signal and that is going to continue through to the winter as well what about further north in the pacific again let's have a look at last week so now we're focusing on this area in particular that's how things were looking last week that's this how things are looking this week so in the northeastern pacific actually things have cooled further up there in the uh, north northeastern portion of the Pacific Ocean compared to uh, last week's sea surface temperatures are lowering through there. The cold PDO signature just here um, is around to the south of, of Hawaii. Uh, that is continuing as well. So could it be that we are going to eventually finish up with this area looking quite cold, maybe? Um, well, by, by the time we get through to winter, turn sea surface temperature noise in combination with an El Nino. That would be quite an unusual and um, quite interesting combination if that was to happen. But we haven't got to see further cooling taking place through here. But if those two cooler areas can meet up with one another in the end, then um, that, that could be quite an interesting signature go alongside the uh, El Nino. In the Indian Ocean, no real change through there. So it continues to look warmer over here and uh, cooler over here. So that, as we've explained, is the signature for the positive phase of the IOD, Indian Ocean Dipole, and uh, that is going to continue uh, through to uh, the winter as well. And then what about in the North Atlantic? Again, let's go back to last week. So as you say, Things looking in the uh, North Atlantic last week. This is how things are looking this week. All areas still looking uh, warmer than average, particularly here from Newfound up towards Greenland and again through the tropical Atlantic. We have got these little cooler areas opening up here, um, which is a result of the storms and hurricanes that we've been seeing over the past few weeks, I reckon. Um, could that start to open up a tripod? Could that start to open up a tripod? What do you think, everybody? Is that being talking a little bit tripod? Let's let me know in the comments uh, what you think. At the end of this video, the last thing we're going to look at will be the, uh, the Atlantic Sea Surface Temperature Lines, and we'll compare back to, uh, to every year since 1985 and see which years are closest to the current scenario. But anyway, that's how it's looking up, generally warm across the oceans, but with quite 
specific, uh, but also quite interesting, um, rather cooling areas. In terms of the seven-day trend, this is how things have uh, changed over the past seven days across the ocean. So in the ENSO region, most areas have warmed, as we have just uh, talked about. In the Indian Ocean, we've warmed through here and uh, cooled over towards Indonesia. So um, that, of course, possibly by a D signature. You can see how the northern, and particularly this northeastern part of the Pacific Ocean, is uh, cooling uh, as well. So uh, we'll see whether that is maintained, of course. In the Atlantic, most areas have actually cooled over the past week. Bear in mind, that's starting off from very high sea, sea surface temperature anomalies. Interesting, that towards the eastern seaboard of the state seems to be cooling uh, through there. And, of course, that is going to be where we've had, like, a tropical storm or something. But... Over towards the UK and Ireland, towards Europe, um, things are generally cooled through there, although it's not particularly evident on the sea. So temperature anomaly map, because the anomalies are so high to uh, average. So we shall see what happens with the uh, trends over the uh, next few weeks, of course. Down in the tropical Atlantic, things are generally warming through there as well. Right, so uh, we'll look at ocean data again at the end of the video, but moving on to the S. So I've established seven oscillation index is currently looking. Remember, the SY is just an index that's reflecting the atmospheric state is measuring air pressure between Darwin and Tahiti. When the SY is negative, then uh, the atmospheric setup will be reflective of El Nino. When the SY is positive, then the atmospheric setup will be reflective of La Nina, of a cold event. So these are our columns here for barometric pressure for Tahiti and also for Darwin. And they've got a daily contribution just here. It's all negative, negative, negative. I won't go through the numbers. You can see them for yourself, but you see, yes, we see uh, strongly negative numbers on all days, really, over the past week or more. And uh, so the atmospheric setup remains uh, very much in an El Nino type state. The 30-day um, average is lowering as well. So at uh, the start of September, we're up here. Uh, now we're down here. So uh, we continue to see the atmospheric state actually, actually get into a stronger El Nino type setup, as you expect, moving through uh, the remainder of the year with the ocean and the atmosphere coupled up with one another. El Nino will continue to... To develop and uh, this is how the CFSB2 is forecasting El Nino uh, at the moment for region 3.4. Remember, I've explained the regions before, but just to explain them again. So, this area here is like uh, it's like what we call 1.2, uh, that's in the eastern portion of the actual Pacific Ocean, and then this is like 3.4 just here in the central region. Uh, right, so back to there, and uh, we can see that uh, for the central region, it's going to be the central region that determines whether you're in an El Nino or La Nina event, by the way, not so much the eastern portion. So at the moment, yes, we are reaching El Nino thresholds, we are over one and a half degrees above average, which is moderate to borderline strong. El Nino now, actually, we are in like a borderline strong El Nino, uh, I think. And the CFSB2 actually forecasts that to reduce slightly towards October and then to pick back up again. So, staying like moderate to borderline strong with the uh, El Nino right way through to the winter. And then, of course, we get into the winter and the spring and we see the Black Dash on she's got on being dropping away as we, we return back to Enzo Neutral. But it looks like this is going to be a, either a moderate or a strong uh, El Nino. And also still predicting Madoki. So this is region 1 or 2, 1 and 2, or 1.2, 1 and 2. Um, this is in the eastern portion of the Atlantic Ocean at the moment. Uh, you know, very warm up there, warmer than it is in region 3.4. But by the time we get through to the winter, we actually see that... Uh, I saw me going down to one degree above average, which is lower than region 3.4, which is going to hover around 1.5 to between 1.5 and 2 degrees above average. We call that a Madoki central based El Nino. That's quite interesting uh, as well. So, from an ENSO perspective and generally from a Pacific perspective, things are looking quite uh, interesting here. And uh, we'll be explaining more about that over the uh, coming few weeks, of course. Right, have a little pause there, I think, and uh, then when we come back, we're going to resume the uh, fourth winter 2023-24 update, so I shall see you in a second. Why don't, why don't you go off and stretch
catch you later. Maybe have a cup of tea or something, a couple of nibbles. And uh, I'll see you uh, in a moment with more. Okay, we're back. We're, we're ready to resume the fourth winter 2023-24 update from Gaz. Hope you've enjoyed it so far. Uh, looked at Ocean's data so far. So if you have enjoyed what you've seen up to this point, please give like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. We need to put on less than 100 subscribers to get ourselves to uh, 17,000 subscribers. Now, we are very, very close to 17K. So please give us a sub. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. Right, let's resume the uh, the um, fourth winter 2023-24 update. So we're going to start off this second section of this uh, update with solar activity. This is how solar disk is looking on our side of this day from Sirhamdark not from solarham.net. Look at that multiple sunspot regions all over the solar disk. We've actually got 12 sunspot regions uh, there. So, uh, I mean, that's what solar maximum looks like, guys. That's well, what you see in a solar maximum sunspots um, all over the uh, solar disk. And solar activity is actually at moderate levels. It's expected to remain at moderate levels over the next three days. Could reach high values uh, as well. This is the Gaz Webby's fourth winter update solar activity tracker from Shryam. The uh, orange line and orange spots depicting each individual day's worth of sunspot activity. These are our latest days up here. So last week we confirmed that we were starting to get a bit of a tick up appearing uh, within solar activity. And that has increased actually, has continued as, and has increased over the past week as we just saw with that image of the solar disk. So we are now up here, not quite reaching the level that we was at um, back earlier in the summer, around uh, end of June, early July time. But we are at a pretty high level of, of the daily sunspot numbers at the moment. And that is enough to start lifting up the trend lines. Remember, the uh, red line is the seven-day average. The green line is a 30-day average. They are all starting to tick back up again. So it does look as though we are going into another spike in so activity. It will be interesting to see whether that actually rises above the spike in activity that we have earlier on in the summer. Will we see those orange spots going up to here to a higher level than we've been at so far in that solar cycle 25? You can see the trend from early in the solar cycle, go back to 2021 here. You can see that the trend is very much in an upwards fashion, as you expect, as we are in the um, maximum phase of the solar cycle. So we've gone from the beginning of the cycle, from minimum, we're going uh, into the maximum. We are at the maximum, and will remain so over the next couple of years. So 2025, we think, is going to be uh, the peak of solar cycle 2025 and so we will continue to see more solar activity of course i'm keep you monitored uh, and posted about that shrine will continue to update the solar activity tracker and uh, thank you so much shrine for keeping that updated okay just to confirm again that the uh, qbo is in its ec phase because i've been in oscillation as we see here from nasa um, the EC phase of the cubia has descended from the stratosphere into the troposphere. So that's the top of the atmosphere, in, but the stratosphere at 10 HPA. And this is the boundary level of the atmosphere, but the troposphere, 30 50 HPA. You can see from both blue green colours that the EC cubio has descended from the strat to the trot. And so the EC cubio is now in grain within uh, the choppers here and this will be an easterly QBO winter. Uh, Arctic Oscillation observed and forecast looking like this. The black line shows where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation red lines at the end where the GFS on some of the forecast in the Arctic Oscillation to go. So at the moment we're around neutral uh, with the AO. At the moment we're in a neutral phase of the Arctic Oscillation after being positive earlier on in September. The GFS ensembles are forecasting that uh, the AO will stay in a uh, neutral to positive phase or weak positive phase for the next week and then might dip into um, weekly negative territory as we get further on into the early part 
of October. That's quite a long way off, though, within ensemble data. Remember, the AO is just an index. That's reflecting the actual state. doesn't drive anything. So, in terms, just tells us what the actual is doing. And when the AO is in its positive phase, got low pressure over the pole, um, and that keeps the cold air basically bottled up into the pole. When the um, AO is negative, and we get high pressure blocking over the pole, and that allows cold air to spill out into the mid latitudes. Uh, the NAO observed and forecast looks like this. So, again, the black line shows where we've been. We have a North Atlantic Oscillation, the red lines on the end, where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the uh, NAO to go. At the moment, we are quite negative uh, with the North Atlantic Oscillation. So, early in September, we went through quite a positive phase. That has flipped into a negative phase. We remain negative if the GFS ensembles are correct for the rest of September. We might see the uh, NAO then picking back up towards neutral as we go into October. So interestingly, but into October, the AO has been forecast to go uh, more negative, and the NAO is being forecast to go back towards neutral, not necessarily positive, but back towards um, neutral. So the two indexes are kind of out of sync there, telling us that the outstretched state is a little bit unusual. You'll notice there, but through the summer, most of the uh, summer was actually uh, negative for the NEO. So you can go back to the 1st of June here, um, and you can see that the black line generally trending underneath neutral for most of the summer. A actually, the first half of July was particularly negative with the NEO. Then we go back closer to neutral, but still on the negative side. I mean, to August, look at this, looking negative uh, with the NEO uh, again. And actually, the uh, summer of 2020 was a top 10 negative NAO summer. And that's going to form the basis of our uh, analogs and reanalysis for this update. Shrine has got all of these years together for us. Thank you so much, uh, Shrine. And we're going to count down the top 10 most negative NAO summers and the winters that follow them. Because we'll have a countdown at Gads Weather. It's da 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 uh, right, okay, pop pickers. <laughs> Here we go then. Starting off at number ten. It's the it's two thousand and nine. So uh, the summer two thousand nine was the tenth most negative uh, summer for the uh, NAO uh, back to nineteen fifty. The winter of 0910 was a proper cold winter with blocking around Greenland and also back into the Arctic. Low pressure was to our south along with the jet stream as well. So cold and wintry with winds coming in from the east and from the northeast in the uh, winter of 0910. At number uh, number nine, we've got 1993. This is just a mild and wet winter, but does have cold snaps. So most of the winters in the 1990s uh, were uh, were mild. There were a couple of cold ones, 90, 1990, 1991, and 95, 96, also to some degree, 96, 97. The rest of them were generally mild. This is actually at the cold range of the range for a 1990s winter, because it does have some quite potent cold snaps coming and going, especially around Christmas and then again in uh, February in particular. Overall, a very wet winter, though, for 93-94. The eighth most negative NEO summer was 2019. And so we've got the PB of doom at winter showing up at number eight with all of this low pressure uh, to our north and the high pressure of course, is to the south, and we bring in most very strong westerly winds. That's a very wet and exceptionally mild winter for 2019-2020. Uh, At number seven, we have got uh, 2008 nine. So I'm not sure whether that's saying 993. That should actually be 2008. So let's quickly tip that over. I've messed something up there, haven't I? But uh, never mind. So at number seven, we've got 2008. And eight, and uh, this is the winter of 0809. Again, you can see that uh, this one tends to have higher pressure to the north and to the northeast, and lower pressure is to the south. I'm sorry, sorry, uh, winds are coming in from an easterly uh, direction. That's the first one of the run of cold winters from 0809 to 2012 2013. And uh, again, it does follow a, uh, a negative NEO summer, the seventh uh, most negative NEO summer actually in 2008. At number six, we've got 2016. 
The winter of 2016-17 was a uh, mild and dry winter, high pressure sitting over the north and west of Europe. That's a very nondescript and quite banal winter. Oh, wow, 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 wow. At number five, we've got 2023-2024. So the fifth most negative area winter was in uh, radio summer, I should say. Uh, we don't know about winter yet. But the fifth most negative NEA summer was the summer of 2023. And there we are. We've got questions to answer for uh, winter 2023-24. What will the winter be like? That's what we're trying to um, work out with all of these updates. And we will have to work it out by the time we get through to our winter forecast. But for now, we're still trying to answer those questions. At number four, we've got 2015, the fourth most negative NEA summer was 2015. Winter 2015 16 uh, was very mild, exceptionally mild actually, with low pressure just to our west and bringing in those west south westy winds as well. Really warm December, of course, in uh, 2015 December to remember for all of the wrong reasons. The car weather fans, Super Nino uh, as well. At number three, we've got 2011, the winter of 2011 2012 uh, was very cold across Eastern Europe, which shot as low brings brutal cold into the east of Europe and down into the Balkans. At the same time, higher pressure is out in the Atlantic, just keeping us out a little bit more protected. So we have a run of very cold winters, or colder winters anyway. Uh, some of them were very cold from 08, 09 to 12, 13. In that run, we do get one winter off, which is 2011, 12, 2011, 2012 was, uh, was uh, the winter that we had off generally quite well, but did have a really cold freeze up for a few days in uh, February of 2012. At number two, we've got 1958, winter 58-59. Um, it's actually quite cold in January. The rest of it is relatively mild, but it does have quite a cold January. Uh, and also quite a dry winter as well. And then at number one, the most negative NAO summer since 1950 was actually 2012. And uh, the winter of 2012-2013 was the final winter of the run of the uh, cold winters from 08 to to, uh, 12, 13, and we have a trough of low pressure, of course, over much of the continent, and then we have this blocking area of high pressure sitting to the north between uh, Greenland and Scandinavia, that brings the wind in from that east to north easterly uh, direction. So, interesting, three, uh, actually four of those winters um, show up in, in this analog package, you know, we've got uh, 08, 09, we've got uh, 2009, 10, 09, 10, we've got uh, 2011, 2012, and then we've got the final one, 2012, 2013. The one we don't have is, uh, two, is uh, 2010, 11. Um, but we've got the rest of them uh, within that uh, within that run. How interesting. Uh, right, OK, so putting all that together, this is how all December's combined are looking, following the top 10 most negative NEO summers. It is a mild and wet signal for these December's with uh, big low pressure in from off the Atlantic. High pressure is down across uh, southern Europe as well. Uh, in comes those west to south westy wind, generally mild, wet and windy on average with both December's. But uh, January January, all January's combined gets more interesting. The blocking signal increasing within high latitudes, lower pressure is being sent away to use. That looks a lot like the analog for 2012 13, actually. And so clearly the uh, cold signal is increasing there with both Januarys. And all February, uh, all February's combined following the top 10 most negative LEO summers. That increases the blocking signal further from Greenland through Iceland to Scandinavia, low pressure. The way to south wind tend to be in from the east. So although there are exceptions to this, of course there are. For example, we've got 2016 in the mix, which is a mild, um, you know, is is a uh, is is a mild February and whatnot. We've got 1994, uh, um, for example, as well. You know, although although there are exceptions to this, overall the package is favouring uh, a winter that gets colder following these negative annual summers, and that is how all summers combined are looking following the top ten. 
most negative. Uh, that's all our all winters combined looking from the top 10 most negative NEO summers. And um, we see again we get the blocking signal to the north. Low pressures further north back because of December. But as we've established as we go through the winter, as we transition on, you know, after the mild signal and wet signal for December, it looks like we have an increasingly cold signal as we go further on into uh, the uh, remainder of the winter. Interesting, 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 everybody. Uh, thank you so much, Shrian, uh, for that. I'm going to see more analogues, of course, next week. So um, thank you so much, Shrian, for getting all of those years together for us. Right, another pause, and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at more. Uh, we're going to be looking at Eurasian Snow Cover next. Always a fan favourite, and uh, that is coming up. So I shall see you in two seconds with much, much more. See you soon, everyone. Okay, we're back, and this is it now. We're not going to stop video again. So for the final time for uh, this uh, this uh, fourth winter update, being epic, epic, epic so far. I hope you enjoyed what you've seen so far. And for the final time, can I just say, can you please like, share, and subscribe? And uh, you know, thank you so much, everybody, um, for dear man. Thank you so to Richard for our incredible uh, winter updates gift. Thank you so much, so so much, my friend. All right, there's no more. There's no more uh, gaps and, and whatnot. We're just going to play straight through um, now but just to say uh, that uh, if you uh, could check out our merch store that'd be absolutely lovely the link to the uh, Gazworthy's merch shop is in the description with this uh, video we have got pillows we've got t-shirts we've got mugs we've got hats we've got stickers you name it we've got it in our merch store so if you could check out the Gazworthy's merch that would be uh, lovely you can become a channel member for Gazworthy's as well for £4.99 a month you uh, will get ex exclusive content for example, a uh, once a month channel member live stream. So please, if you can, check out uh, the channel membership and uh, become a channel member. Cost £4.99 a month to do that. You can give a uh, super thanks on this and all of our videos. You can find the thanks button either along this bar just here sometimes or behind the three little uh, dots there. So you can uh, give a uh, donation through super thanks and it will flag up your comment, your shout out in the video if you do that. You can also super chat on the live streams and of course you can become a paypal uh, donor uh, as well paypal donator uh, through our paypal page the link to that is in the description in fact the link to all of those um options is in the description with the video all of this is helping to pay for gas whether this is helping to pay for me to be here bringing all of this content to you so if you enjoy the content that we are able to provide for you then please can you consider you know uh, giving us a donation and we thank you so very much everybody Everybody, um, for doing that. Thank you so much. Right, let's crack on then. So, the uh, uh, this is how Eurasian Snow Cover was looking uh, when we did last week's third um, winter update. So, yes, we have got some white areas over in the eastern portion of Siberia. That is Snow Cover, of course. Eventually, all of this area is going to fill up with snow. And it's always a fan favourite to see how quickly that happens. But that's the scenario we did last week's third update. This is the latest and further gains have occurred over the past week. We have now have quite a significant area of snow here in the far eastern portion of Siberia and some of it beginning to spread into more central regions uh, as well. Just a few little white patches here and there, but definitely there has been quite a significant gain in snow cover over the uh, past week. And I can tell you that from next week, we're going to start comparing back to previous years. So uh, from next week, you're going to see a lot, lot more of Eurasian snow cover. It will start to play a big part within our winter updates from next week. In terms of Arctic sea ice extent, and that's depicted here by this uh, yellow area, of course. That's where we've got Arctic sea ice. In terms of the extent, we have now turned the corner on the melt season. You can see from the blue line here that we are now beginning to uh, tick back up. So the reef freeze uh, has uh, commenced. The melt season has ended. How are we comparing with recent years for the final time? Let's have a look. So we are under 2022. And we're under 2021 uh, for uh, Arctic Science Extent as well. We are above 2020. Uh, and we are on a par with 2019. We are under 2018. And we're under 2017 as well. 
We're very close to 2016, just ever so slightly under that year. We're under 2015. We're well under 2014. We're well under 2013. We're above 2012, which, of course, is the record uh, minimum year. We are a little bit under 2011 now. And we're under 2010 too. We're significantly under 2009. We're a little bit under 2008. We're very close to 2007. And we're significantly under 2006. And we're significantly under 2005 as well. And I won't go any further back than that because we will be significantly under all of those uh, years. But we have turned the corner. The blue line is starting to tick back up, telling us that, yes, we are beginning to gain Arctic sea ice now. And so we will not be looking at this again. This is the final time you'll be seeing uh, that for this season. So it's been a big melt season. What we can say is that we're basically... We're basically had the third biggest melt season since 1979. The two seasons that are under this year um, are uh, 2020 and 2019, and uh, 2020 and 2012, I should say. So we're we're above those two years, but basically we've had like the third or fourth uh, biggest uh, melt season back to 1979. Uh, right, okay, this is uh, stratospheric temperature at 10 HPA over North Pole, latest GFS run. So this is a Vortex just here uh, at 10 HPA in the stratosphere. Eventually, that could deepen into you know into the classic polar vortex that we all associate with uh, winter at the moment. Quite weak, of course, because we're early on in the season. You can see that the GFS is forecasting the blue to get a little bit deeper in around a week or so's time. So, cooling will continue in the stratosphere over the uh, North Pole at 10 HPA. And uh, look at how this blue area just sort of expands out and gets deeper and more intense. That's the polar vortex uh, getting both colder and also at the same time stronger over the next couple of weeks as we move from September into October. For the first time this, uh, this season, first time this year, we're going to bring you some forecast data. So uh, this is, uh, these are all coming from Copernicus. These are various models from the Copernicus website. This is how the ECM WF is uh, forecasting stratospheric temperatures to develop over the uh, coming season. So the, blue, the black line here is the uh, is climatology, is, is like the average line for time of year. The blue and red lines are the model climate mean and the forecast ensemble mean. And a little bit difficult to explain what those two uh, mean. Um, but basically, if you keep both the blue and red lines and the black line, then you're having a weaker uh, or it's, the models are predicting a weaker than uh, average um, polar vortex. And you can see that as we uh, go from dates on the bottom of the periods, of course, you can see that the blue and red lines are generally the ECM being forecast to be underneath that black line uh, through the autumn and particularly into the second half of the winter, actually. So, mid December, just there, a bit change just there. Notice how both the blue and the red lines are falling away. So, uh, you know, the model is predicting that we will have a weaker than average um, polar vortex uh, this year in terms of the uh, zone of wind at uh, 10 HPA. Um, and uh, you can see, what's going to be interesting, of course, this is, uh, if any lines are there, then you get a reversal of zone of wind. So what's going to be interesting uh, as we go through the next couple of months and these uh, get updated in October and again in November, it will be interesting whether more ensemble members go for a reversal of zone the winds at 10 HPA. Um, this into the winter, this is Metro France. Again, you can see that the uh, blue and the red lines are generally trending underneath the black line here, which, remember, the black line is climatology. That's like average. So, uh, again, we see that uh, uh, the Metro France bond is predicting that the uh, zone of wind, which is the picture of the strength of the polar vortex, if you like, the zone of wind will be um, weaker than average uh, through the coming season, from the autumn and into winter. Again, these on some members down here are the ones that the model is, um, uh, is forecasting, you know, to, to get a reverse of zone of winds. That would be via a sudden stratospheric warming event. Again, we'll know more as we go further on through the season whether more on some members members uh, pick up on a reversal of zone of winds. Now, this is DWD. This is very striking. Look how far both the black and red lines are 
and uh, blue and red lines, should say. Look how far both the blue and red lines are underneath the black line. This is the German DWD model, and clearly that one is going for really quite a weak um, polar vortex, actually, after starting off close to average as we go from November into December. Um, you know, that one looks like it's going for an early weakening as well as wings, actually, I have to say, possibly like an early strap warming event in November or possibly into December as well. Um, and then and then weakening it further, actually, into February. So could we have, like, uh, an SSW early on in the winter and then, again, later on in the winter? But uh, it does look quite dramatic, that. Quite unusual to see um, the, the blue and red lines there underneath climatology. JMA is much closer to uh, averages for Japanese model. So initially, the, the uh, blue and red lines are slightly under the black line. Like, you know, the climatology is a slightly weaker polar vortex of being predicted there, so the wind polar vortex being predicted there for the early part of winter, but then later on, time to see uh, hints that things power up uh, a little bit, and notice how many of the ensemble members start lifting up, so Jeremy looks like it's going for a strengthening of the uh, PV after uh, a, a relatively weak start, and then lastly we've got the uh, UK Met, so uh, again we see from the earlier part of winter, from, from the autumn into early winter, the uh, blue and red lines are just generally underneath the black line, generally underneath the um, average for the time of the year, week of an average uh, zone of wind and polar vortex, therefore, is predicting. Then we see signs of a bit of a strengthening through the middle part of the winter before it uh, weakens off again later on in the uh, winter. Overall, I have to say, a lot of those models are looking weaker than average for the strength of the zone of wind, and it can be very interesting to see how that works out uh, when the models update again in um, October and uh, once more in November. We will be keeping you up to date. Of course we will with all things stratosphere-wise over the uh, coming weeks and months. Now the last thing we're going to finish with for this full winter update for the first time this season is having a look at the Atlantic sea surface temperatures and comparing them back to past years. So I want you, if you can everybody, to ignore all of this. Ignore the Pacific, ignore the Indian Ocean, ignore anything south of there. This is where we're focusing on, just here. Okay, so we're going to wish through these as quickly as we can. So that's how the setup is, or we explain at the start of this video, that's how the setup is right now uh, with Atlantic sea surface temperature and lines. How does that compare to previous years? Well, actually, I think we're relatively close to last year, to 2022, to be honest, but probably Probably rather warmer this year than in 2022, particularly from the tropical Atlantic. Um, but not that far off. OK, so let's run through. This is 2021. So I think we're uh, significantly warmer, really, than 2021. Although there probably possibly is some similarity. Please let me know, by the way, everybody, in the comments which you, you think are similar. 2020, there's no comparison, really, this year to 2020. That's 2019. Again, I don't think we've seen uh, much comparison this year to 2019. That is 2018. Again, significantly cooler uh, in most areas of the Atlantic then. That is 2017. What do you think about that one? Um, significantly warmer this year compared to 2017 I think. Although what is interesting about 2017 was an active hurricane season and these blue areas are where um, the hurricane season starts to open out some cooler average sea surface temperature anomalies and that might be starting to take place uh, but a little bit further northwards around this area um, this time. But uh, that's something to keep an eye on, you know, um, and, and, uh, and yeah, we've got to keep an eye on that. But basically, not much comparison this year to 2017. That's 2016, not much comparison this year uh, to then either. That's 2015, clearly no comparison at all. Look how uh, much colder uh, the sea surface temperature already is there. That's the cold blob. I'm sure you remember the cold blob, but we thought it was the start of the cold PDO, uh, the cold AMO, I should say. But, of course, it was a false storm. That's 2014 also with the cold blob, so no comparison. Uh, again, 2013, again, not much comparison there. That's 2012. What do you think about 
that one. So if this area was to cool further, then 2012 might actually develop into uh, a, a closer match, actually. We will do this again later in October, by the way, and then a third time in November. So if these, if these little blue spots here um, start opening up into a colder than average area, then 2012 could be uh, a closer match overall. So that's like a tripod that we have at this point in 2012. Uh, warmer there, cooler there and uh, warmer through there. So that, that's going to be one to keep an eye on. No comparison to 2011. Uh, that's 2010. Again, we've got a proper tripod situation which we don't have this time. We may get to a tripod, but at the moment, we don't have a tripod. Um, so no real comparison this year to 20, 2010. No comparison to 2009. No comparison to 2008, 2007, 2006. Not really showing um, much comparison either, I don't think. 2005. What do you think about that? Well, again, let's go back. Obviously, it's much warmer this year compared to 2005 overall. Again, it's going to be a question of... So, this is like a tri tripod as well. In 2005, warmer there, cooler through here, warmer down here. Um, so, again, it is going to be a question of whether we open out these cold average areas that are just beginning to look a bit spotty there uh, in the uh, Atlantic. That's 2004, no comparison to 2003. No comparison to 2002. No comparison to 2001. No comparison. And 2000, no comparison either. Let's carry on there. 1990 no comparison, 98, no comparison at all, 97, no similarity, really, 95, uh, 96, I should say, uh, no comparison either, uh, 995, no comparison, um, and we're going back now towards the cold AMO era, of course, we're going back to the early 90s, so now you'll see the Atlantic becoming much colder, 1992, for example, and compare that to now, 2023, compared to 1992, that's the warm AMO compared to the cold AMO, but of course, this is, this is just the warm AMO. This is like a record-breaking uh, warm Atlantic. You know, this is like the warm AMO on steroids. And what a difference compared to 1992. Like 91, uh, 1990, 1989, 1988, 1987, 1986. Look at how cold the Atlantic is in 1986. And lastly, 1985. That's far back as we can go. Not just the Atlantic looking cold. I mean, the Pacific and the Indian Ocean also looking so much colder compared to um, now. So that is the change, you know, from 1985, all those years ago, to uh, now. And look how the oceans have, have, have warm, 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 warm. And so, obviously, there's no comparison in the Atlantic right now to 1985. So I don't think there's any year particularly there that is comparable so this year, maybe 2022, um, you know, but obviously we've got a, a very, very warm uh, Atlantic atmosphere. It has been reaching record-breaking uh, warm levels. So so um, what's going to be interesting is that the, the, the level of warmth is going to be above any other year. But what we're going to got to focus on is the profile uh, and whether if we start moving towards a tripod then we will be able to say that whilst we're warmer this year like 2012 and uh, 2010 you know both years might start to show uh, more of a similarity um, albeit we are at a warmer uh, level with the Atlantic sea so temperature is even compared to uh, those years so we shall see we'll carry on monitoring uh, what's going on in the Atlantic over over the, uh, over the rest of the season. Of course. Of course we will. Right, that's it. Well, what do you think about that, everybody? That was epic, wasn't it? Well, you know, really, really unique content. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, fourth winter 2023 24 update. If you have been pleased, you like, share, and subscribe. Check out the merch. And, you know, if you can afford to, give us a little donation as well. And we thank you so much for uh, doing that. So we are going to be back at 6 p.m. And uh, we'll be live streaming uh then so you can tell tell me what you think about this world but if you any questions then then fire away i will endeavor to answer those and uh we're going to show you long range uh on that as well as well as doing a 10 to 14 day as well so it's going to be an epic epic live stream starting at 6 p.m and running until around 7 so i shall see a little bit uh later on thank you so much to richard for the gift thank you so much to shrine for all of the help on the uh video hashtag team gab doing an amazing job as always and as i said the very first thing you're going to see 
at the beginning of next week's fifth update will be the springometer. So you will get your first chance to see how all of these four updates have affected the springometer, how the swing is looking. Will we have uh, the springometer pointing towards a cold winter? We have the springometer pointing towards a mild winter, or will we be somewhere in the middle? You will find out as the very first thing that you see at the beginning of next week's fifth update. But for this epic, epic, epic fourth winter 2023-24 update from Gas Wovitz, that is all for now. Thank you for watching. I'll see you a little bit later on on our live stream. Um, and I'll see you for next week for the next installment. But for this one, that's all for now. Bye for now.